This is APL, the Applied Physics Laboratory at the University of Washington in Seattle. Under the sea, powerful currents waiting to be tapped to power hundreds of homes. Admiralty Inlet on Puget Sound. APL scientists are regular visitors here. The APL research vessel Jack Robertson is a familiar sight in these waters, along with ferry boats and the occasional Trident submarine. A lot off the bottom. Scientists aboard the Robertson are working to determine the environmental feasibility of tidal power. What we're out here doing today is collecting measurements uh, to, to inform that effort. Um, and so you sort of can think of it as a baseline study. We're trying to understand uh, what the environment is like right now. And then long term, the intent is to understand how this new technology operates in that well. environment. Does it have any effects? How, how does it do? Um, you know, are there environmental effects and how does it perform? Is it, is it worth doing? This is a water sampler that we lower from the ship to collect samples of water at different depths. Supported by the Department of Energy, the APL team is focused under the surface a surface rippled by powerful forces below. That turbulence is one of the reasons we're out here. The whole area has very strong tides, a lot of energy here. The water here, uh, even though it looks really calm and quiet, is actually moving at about three meters a second right now. That's about six miles an hour, fast for Puget Sound. That's very fast. Uh, oceanographers get very excited about meter per second currents, but uh, three meters a second is, is really moving. The surging water below is generated by the predictable and dependable ebb and flow of the tides. Question, can this natural energy be harnessed? Working with APL and the University of Washington, Snohomish County intends to find out. Public utility district plans call for two 33-foot tidal-powered turbines to be generating electricity by 2011. Enough power for 700 homes. But before the turbines are lowered into Admiralty Inlet, APL researchers are compiling an intensive profile of the proposed turbine site. We're trying to understand what is the current water quality in Admiralty Inlet so that when a tidal power device is installed, we, can, we have some baseline to understand if there's any effect from that, if it's changing the mixing of the water coming in through Admiralty Inlet. So we'd like to know quantities like the temperature and the salinity and the dissolved oxygen that are being exchanged from the Juan de Fuga Strait to Puget Sound, and this is how we make that measure. This remote-controlled vehicle descends to the bottom of the sound and sends back live video to the Robertson. So this allows us to actually see what's down there. Um, rocks, cobbles, uh, vegetation, uh, little, possibly marine life. Okay. Side to side right now. So far, the APL survey finds few fish to be disturbed by the turbines. And when in operation, the turbines will be 180 feet down too deep to interfere with surface traffic. I'm chomping at the bit. I want to get these things in the water and, and see what they can do. Congressman Jay Inslee, after a briefing by APL's Thompson and others, enthusiastic about the potential of tidal power. There's huge energy available to us, both in tidal and wave power. And here at the, the UW, uh, we're looking at a proposal to have a more standardized testing facility in Puget Sound to help really move to commercialization of this industry. So a Puget Sound tryout for tidal power appears to be on track, thanks to Snohomish County, the UW, and APL. This is APL, the Applied Physics Laboratory at the University of Washington in Seattle.